bubble trays. How do they work and what's the difference between a bubble cap tray and a perforated plate? Let's go find out. Hey everyone, Distiller Krilling here, one of your favorite Hoban Hobby Distillers. Yes, I know there has been a few bubble plate videos out there, but I want to show you my take and especially the perforated plate. In a sense, bubble plates works with the cross flow of vapor and liquid that forces the vapor liquid interaction. Let me explain it this way. Take this bubble cap tray for instance. It's got five bubble caps and one down comma. Now, how does that liquid interaction work? Take this bubble cap that I have here. Vapor will now pass from the bottom up into the riser and come out of these small holes. With the cap on top, that vapor will now force back down and exit this serrated edge or the slots on the side. Now adding the bubble cap to a tray or a plate, the vapor will now start to condense and eventually will start to build up on this plate here. As it rises, it will go, go over and above that serrated slot on the end and the vapor will now pass through the water as it goes up. As these vapors that starts to come out of that slot starts to pass through the water, the liquid then entraps the lesser or lower volatile molecules, those heavier molecules. It traps them and as it traps them, it keeps it on the tray and then condenses it back into a liquid. The vapor that's now lighter or more volatile will now exit and go up to the next plate or the next column being more pure distillate or having a higher potential ABV as it goes up. Now let's talk about this guy, your downcomer. Now as this liquid level now starts to build up and rise and rise and rise, it comes to a point where it will overflow and go back into the downcomer. Your downcomer in an essence is a bubble cap just turned upside down. As the liquid now enters, it will start to flow down and it will come out of these holes at the bottom of the downcomer will be forced up again and then exit through the serrated edge or the slots on top and then fall back down into your next column that you have underneath or straight back to the boiler depending on how you set up your stall that day. With the design, vapor will only be allowed to go up through the bubble cap and all the way up and liquid will only come down through the down comma and back down. You can basically say that you've got a one-way valve for vapor going up and a one-way valve, one valve for liquid to come down. Now let's talk about perforated or sieve plates. This is the most common or simplest form of cross flow you can have in a column. Now obviously, this sieve plate I use for my gin basket. If you want to go check more about that, check this video card here on top. I will explain you everything how I set up my 13 liter still. But I use this smaller one that's with this glass column that's also connected to the 13 liter boiler. Perforated plates also comes with a downcomer like this one already assembled. The downcomer in a sense is exactly the same as the bubble caps. It also allows for water to overflow from the top, exit through the holes, start to fill up and come out of this serrated edge. So how does a perforated plate work? What happens is that your vapor will pass through all these small holes that's around the middle where your downcomer is and it will pass through. As it passes through, it makes like a vapor pressure here at the bottom and that keeps the liquid from falling down back into the same holes the vapor came through. That's why your liquid will only start to build up and will be allowed to overflow through your downcomer and back down again. At low flow rate, you can have it that small droplets will start to form over these small holes and start to fall down. We call that weeping, is the liquid then weeps back through down to the bottom. Now that we've got a better understanding about bubble cap plates and perforated plates, let's see how they measure up. Perforated plates are the easier option and it's mostly favorable for that authentic home build guy that wants to build his still all by himself. There's no problem with that. Look at this 4 inch perforated plate with the downcomer that I found on the net. You guys can go any size you want with a perforated plate, have more downcomers on it, have longer downcomers. It doesn't matter, you can really play around with a perforated plate. Now, bubble cap plates, on the other hand, is much more effective and efficient. You can have 
fewer plates on your column and get a more period distillate than what you would do if you had perforated plates. But bubble caps are more suitable to getting blocked or maybe even break. So it's always good to remember to keep either a spare plate or some spare caps on hand or you have to make a different plan. One way to make sure that your caps always function very effectively and efficiently is to make sure you get them cleaned up nicely. From time to time, I would disassemble them, clean them up nicely and then assemble them everything again. If you keep cleaning them properly every now and again, you will not have issues with your bubble caps. Now let's talk about flooding. Flooding is that time when your liquid now starts to rise above your downcomer and it keeps on rising and going up. So it means that there is too much liquid for the downcomer to handle and it cannot drain all of the liquid at once. This can happen for a few reasons, but it's not limited to the following. It can be that your downcomer itself got blocked and it's not draining anymore. It can also be that you're running your still too hot and there's a lot of vapor passing through. And as these vapor passes through, and the molecules getting trapped and the liquid starts to build up is just too much for the downcomer to handle. Where you can prevent that is just to turn down your heat a bit and let it just subside a bit and you can see it's there and then either keep it there or just crank it up slightly but not all the way where you had it before. Another way can be that if you're having a reflux condenser or defragonator and it's like right on top of your still, it can be that you're having the water open too much. So it means that it's got a lot of cooling here on top and it's pushing down all that liquid and no vapor can pass through. With all that liquid now pushing back down from the reflux condenser, it's also having the downcomer not coping with it and your level will start to flood. A way to avoid that is maybe just to close a bit on your cooling water, not to have your reflux condenser work that hard and maybe allowing some of those vapors to pass through. Maybe it's a combination of both. Maybe you're running your still too hard and you've got your reflux condenser open too much. Just make the necessary adjustments depending on what run you're doing. Well, that's it that I have for you guys today. I hope it clears up a bit and you guys can see that either having bubble caps or a perforated plate works with both combinations or both applications depending on what you're running and what your desire is. So it's your choice, guys. I cannot say one is better than the other. It just don't, depends on what you want to do and what your end goal with it. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me and that whole YouTube algorithm to bump up my videos a bit. If you guys like the content that I'm giving, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you do not miss any of my other videos. If you guys are wondering still a bit more about bubble caps or perforated plates, give me a comment down below. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. If I cannot answer it, I will definitely find out someone who can answer it for you or drop down a link where you can maybe read through a bit. Until I see you guys again, remember to be awesome, to be kind and be yourself. Cheers guys.